good morning so in this video let us discuss what is double entry system so we are moving on to the basics of uh, accounting um, concepts or how to record transactions or record transactions in the accounting books so we have to know different types of accounts different rules rules of debit credit etc so a double entry system it is a system of bookkeeping or it is a system of recording transactions in accounts so double entry means uh, it is told that every transaction which we record in the books have two aspects that is one is giving aspect and one is receiving aspect so that is the basis of double entry system that means we have to record a transaction in its both aspects that is debit aspect and credit aspect so debit means due for that that is a receiving aspect and credit means due to that or giving aspect that means for example if we purchase uh, some raw materials or purchase something then we purchase the goods and we give or we pay money for it so there are two aspects the receiving aspect means purchasing of the goods and giving aspect means we pay the amount. Both have to be recorded in our books. The purchase have to be recorded in, uh, as a purchase of rupees that much. And payment of the amount have also to be recorded in the payment call. So that is the aspect of double entry system. So in accounting, we keep all the or we record all the transactions in this double entry system or we use or we keep the double entry system of bookkeeping in recording the transactions okay so uh, how to record or how we classify the two aspects it's all based on the type of accounts for all the transactions or for all the items in accounts there are classification that means uh, there are uh, different types of, they are called accounts. Like in our example, we told we purchase goods for cash. So there is a, uh, uh, the receiving aspect is purchased and the giving aspect is cash. So this purchase, this cash, everything is categorized into different type of accounts. Each of the transaction have uh, two aspects we have already mentioned, debit aspect and credit aspect or receiving aspect and giving aspect. So these aspect, these are receiving aspect or this giving aspect, each one is classified or each one is grouped as an account. So account means, account is a uh, summary of business transactions during a particular time, like uh, purchase. So purchase account means the summary of all the purchases we have made in a year. Similarly, cash account, means the summary of all cash related transactions we have made in a year so account is a summary of business transactions during a particular time so now we have to see what which are the classification of accounts accounts are mainly classified into personal account real account and nominal account now first one is personal account what is personal account? Personal account means accounts of persons. In simple terms, personal account means account of a person. So, it is again divided into natural person account, artificial person account and representative personal account. Now, natural person account means account of individual human beings like we. For example, Manu account, Radha account. That is what is natural person account. Uh, account, account in the name of individual persons. Second is artificial person account. Artificial person account, personal account means accounts of artificial persons. So artificial persons means those uh, institutions or organizations which are created by law those organizations will be running by natural human beings 
बट दे हैव सेपरेट आइडेंटिटी और दे आर सेपरेट एंडिटी सो सच टाइप ऑफ पर्सन आर कॉल्ड आर्टिफिशियल पर्सनल अकाउंट दैट मीन्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल लाइक बैंक अकाउंट बैंक इज एन आर्टिफिशियल पर्सन और सम कंपनी और फॉर्म लाइक ए बी सी लिमिटेड इट्स ऑल आर्टिफिशियल पर्सन और मे बी सम एजुकेशनल इंस्टीट्यूशन और हॉस्पिटल्स दे आर ऑल दे आर दे आर ऑल आर्टिफिशियल पर्सनल अकाउंट एंड थर्ड वन इज रेप्रेजेंटेटिव पर्सनल अकाउंट रेप्रेजेंटेटिव पर्सनल अकाउंट मीन्स दोज अकाउंट विच रेप्रेजेंट ए पर्सन it is usually related to a person but it is not actually person but it is a representation of the person so the example of representative personal account is uh, like outstanding expenses or prepaid expenses like that this all come under representative personal account then next is uh, next type of account is real account so real account in uh, accounts means that accounts of assets or properties of the business uh, those asset or investment or property which are held by the business come under real account for example like fixed asset account machinery account land and building account like the third type of classification is nominal account nominal account means uh it is related to all those accounts like income income nature revenue nature gain expense loss all these type nature uh, accounts are uh, come under nominal accounts for example sales purchase expenses all these are nominal accounts because sale is an income purchase is an expense then gain loss or all other expenses which we have to pay like salary advertisement discounts all those come under nominal account so these are the main classification of the accounts that means in accounting we record each transaction first we record in a journal then we move on to ledger so in order to record in a journal an item we must know which item is that that means which type is that a personal account is that a real account or is that a nominal account then only we sh- we will get to know which item we have to debit which item we have to credit this uh, the rules for debit and credit are coming so first we have to know which are the different types of accounts first one is personal account second one is real account and third one is nominal account so personal account uh, again classification are there then real account means assets or properties of the business and nominal account means income revenue gain expense loss etc okay so some of the examples of personal account we have already seen natural person like revi account manu account like that artificial person like bank's account or company's account and all then representative personal accounts example is outstanding expenses prepaid expenses etc okay so uh, hope you are clear with the different types of accounts and their meaning so whenever you uh, come through a transaction you have to first like in our example we have told we purchase some good so we have purchased some goods for cash so this purchase come under purchase is a nominal account because it is a expense then cash what about cash cash means it is a real account because cash is an asset of the company so in such way we have to categorize which item is which account so then we have to apply the rule of debit and credit so hope you are clear with this now we have already seen which are the different types of accounts next is we have to see the rules of debit and credit so Uh, there are mainly two approaches in determining uh, the debit and credit first is english approach and second one is american approach so according to english approach the classification of debit and credit uh, is based on the type of accounts which we have already discussed that is uh, based on the uh, account accounts are classified into personal real and nominal 
based on that we uh, we uh, make an assumption on which we have to debit and which we have to credit that means uh, while uh, recording a transaction we must first identify which type of account is that whether it is personal account or whether it is real account whether it is nominal account each item we have to identify then we have to apply the rule that means if it is personal account then we have to debit the receiver and credit the giver that means for example if two persons uh, if uh, ravi and manu ravi paid 500 to manu here who is the giver ravi is the giver so credit the giver so ravi's account will be credited whereas who receives the money manu receives the money so debit the receiver that is manu account will be debited that means who receives the thing if it is a personal account the rule is debit the receiver and credit the giver who gives credit him and who receives debit him second one is a real account a real account we have already told uh, accounts of assets uh, or properties of the business so the rule of real account is debit what comes in and credit what goes out that means if we have purchased uh, or if we have uh, purchased an equipment then uh, what comes into the business is the equipment so we have to debit the equipment that means equipment account debtor then credit what goes out we have purchased the equipment by paying some amount of money so cash have been moved out of the business cash is also a real account so credit what goes out what goes out is cash so the entry will be equipment account data to cash account so in all type of real account transaction the rule of debit and credit is that debit what comes in and credit what goes out third one is nominal account nominal account we have already mentioned accounts of incomes expenses gains losses etc so uh, the rule of nominal account is that debit all expenses and losses and credit all incomes and gains we have to debit if it is an expense or loss then we have to debit that and if it is an income or gain we have to credit it so this is the rule of nominal account so uh, personal account debit the receiver credit the giver real account debit what comes in credit what goes out and nominal account debit all expenses and losses credit all incomes and gains okay that means uh, we will record a transaction like this something account data to something so this is debit and this is credit that debit and credit rules are this so this is based on the english approach second one is american approach according to american approach how we classify or how we know which item should be debited or which item should be credited it is that uh, according to Amer american approach uh, they have classified uh, accounts into five categories one is assets then liabilities then capital then expenses or losses incomes and gains these five classifications have been made by them and then uh, they apply the rule of debit and credit here if it is an asset if the item or the transaction is an asset then if the asset increase that means if in our uh, transaction if for example we have told we have purchased the equipment for cash so equipment is an asset so equipment comes into the business so our asset increased so asset is increased so if asset is increased debit it and if asset is decreased credit it our cash has gone out so decrease in asset we have credited cash that means equipment account equipment account data to cash account so here it is an asset so asset has increased so it is debited when asset decrease we credit that means credited this then 
if it is a liability, if the thing is in nature of a liability, then if it increase, we have to credit and if it decrease, we have to debit. Similarly, capital also same case like liability. If capital increase, we have to credit. If capital decrease, we have to debit. Then, expenses or losses, it is the same as in the case of assets. If it increase, we have to debit. And if it decrease, we have to credit. Then, incomes or gains, if it increase, we have to credit. And if it decrease, we have to debit. So, we can classify this like for our convenience, assets, then assets and uh, this expenses, it both come under same. That means assets or expense, if it increase, we are debiting. Similarly, if assets or expense, if it reduce or decrease, we credit it. Similarly, these three can be under another category, liability or capital or income. If these three items increase, we have to credit if it decrease, we have to debit. So, in short, we can say assets, expenses or losses. If it increases, we have to debit. If it decreases, we have to credit. Similarly, liabilities or capital or incomes if it increases, we have to credit. If it decreases, we have to debit. This is another rule of debit and credit. Uh, so, uh, you, we have to know the rules. The basic rules of debit and credit, we have, to, we have to be aware. So, these are the basic rules of debit and credit. Okay. 